Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a closer look at the elementary particles called leptons. So we know that there are six leptons and here they are. There's the electron, the muon, the tau, and then the three corresponding neutrinos. Now let's, le let's look at some basic properties of leptons. So leptons come from the Greek word leptos that means small or light. So leptons tend to be very small particles. There's one exception though, the tau uh, is not so small. We'll get into that in just a little while. Uh, but for the ones like the electron and the neutrinos are very tiny particles in relation to other particles. So they participate in the electromagnetic interaction if they are charged. Now the neutrinos do not carry a charge. You can see here the charge is zero for the neutrinos, so therefore they, there's no electromagnetic interaction. But the other three particles, the electron, the muon, and the tau, they do indeed have a negative one charge, so they, do, they are affected by the electromagnetic uh, interactions. So they all have spin one half, and the, when we talk about the spin, there's an intrinsic angular momentum spin. Just like in the macro world, uh, objects that are rotating, they have an angular momentum, and so there's a likewise angular momentum existing in the electrons. Now, not that the electrons are spinning just like a top, but it has the same properties as if it was spinning, and it turns out that for the electron, there's two angular momentum states, and it can flip back and forth between the two, therefore either absorbing or releasing energy from one state to the other when it's inside of an atom as it's paired up with the nucleus, the positively charged nucleus. So yes, there is indeed something like uh, an angular momentum spin, that's why they call it the intrinsic angular momentum, and the units are h bar, that's Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Uh, what else do we have? So there are the six leptons and they have the corresponding six anti six antiparticles, so for every uh, lepton, there's an anti-lepton, so for the electron there's a positron, for the muon there's a positive muon, for the tau there's a positive tau, and for each one of the three, three neutrinos there's an anti-neutrino. So there's a total of 12 leptons, 6 leptons and 6 anti-leptons. So let's take a look at their mass. Now for an electron you need 511,000 electron volts or 0.511 MEVs, M stands for mega or million, so it takes a little bit over half a million electron volts in order to make, to, to have enough energy to make the mass of a single electron. That's relatively small because the amount of energy you need for a proton or a neutron is almost 2,000 times as much. So the mass of an electron is about 1 2,000 the mass of a proton or the mass of a neutron. Now notice that the other two, the two other particles, muon and tau, they're much larger. This one takes 105.7 million electron volts, and this one would take over a billion or almost two billion electron volts of energy to make that particle. Hence, these two particles tend to be very unstable. Uh, the the uh, muon only lasts for about 2.2 millionths of a second, and here the, the tau uh, lasts for less than a trillionth of a second before it disintegrates. So these are very unstable particles. They require a lot of energy to create. Now the electron is a very stable particle. It it's lasts just about forever and therefore it, it is small and very stable. So are the neutrinos. Now the neutrinos are very strange particles. Notice they're extremely small. They have very small amount of mass. Much, much smaller than for example an electron. In this case it is uh, seven versus uh, half a million, so it's about one in a hundred thousand, so it's about a hundred thousand times smaller than an electron, and these are about a million, this is about a million times smaller, and this is about, uh, about one fifty thousand or one twenty thousand of the mass of an electron. They're still, all three are very small particles, and therefore they move at very high speeds, near the speed of light. They, they used to think that these particles were like photons and therefore had no mass at all, but now we know that's not the case. They have a small amount of mass, so therefore they don't move quite at the speed of light. Now, what's interesting about it is these particles, they're very elusive. The reason why they're elusive is they carry no charge, so there's no interaction with, the, uh, with matter, and so therefore uh, the only way that they can interact is if they actually are in a head-on collision with a particle like a neutron or a proton. Other than that, these particles tend to go straight through just about any material. And these particles, matter of fact, go right through you right now. As you're sitting there watching this video, there's neutrinos going through your body and not interacting at all with any atoms in your body. And they continue right through the Earth and continue to come out the other side of the Earth. And most of them do not interact with any matter inside the Earth as they go right through them. So they're very, very elusive particles very strange kind of particles. 
Uh, let's see here, other than stability, we have the charge. Notice that these have charge, these don't have charge. And they also have an isospin related. Here the isospin is minus one half for the electron, the tau, and the muon, and they're plus one half for the neutrinos. Now the isospin is a quantum mechanic number that is associated with what we would call the strong interaction. And it turns out since these leptons do not have a strong, uh, a strong interaction with the strong force, matter of fact, they, they only have an interaction with the weak force, you would then expect them to have an isospin according to that. In a later video, I'll explain a lot more about the isospin, but it has to do with whether or not there's a strong or weak interaction with the strong force and the weak force. So that gives you a very nice overview of what leptons are how much mass they have, what they, whether or not they're stable or not, whether or not they carry charge, and whether or not there's a spin, an angular momentum intrinsic spin associated with them. And yes, these are very elementary particles. They're point particles. There's no internal structure to them. They're very different from particles such as protons and neutrons, which are indeed made up of even smaller particles like quarks. And uh, hopefully that will give you a good idea, a feel of what leptons are.